So today I'm going to tell you why you might want to consider using your telephoto lens for astrophotography and why you might want to consider actually stepping up to a telescope, even a small one like this. Tonight I'm going to be testing that telephoto lens against the Red Cat. Now, you might notice that I'm using a ball mount right here. Um, I'll use that for the Red Cat. I've switched the plate over to Arc Swiss. I am doing this because I don't have a Vixen mount for the telephoto lens. And it was just simply easier to switch this over than come up with some convoluted way to put a uh, Vixen mount on the telephoto lens. And it has Arc Swiss and this has Arc Swiss, so that's what we're going to do tonight. Normally I would attach Red Cat right here, but for fair comparison, that's what I ended up doing. I'm using my William Optic Xenostar with the Orion Auto Guider in the bottom here, as you can kind of see, to uh, basically do the uh, guiding. I realize it's maybe not the wisest way of doing it, but it's the current setup I have that seems to work pretty well until I sort of get a new uh, guide scope and camera. And tonight we are going to be imaging the Jellyfish Nebula. So I hope you enjoy this video and yeah, I'm probably going to fast track the rest of the night and uh, you can watch me uh, image uh, the Jellyfish Nebula which is sort of up in this direction. So let's get this going. Nikon 70 to 200 millimeter scope with the 1.7 adapter on the back. The reason I went with this setup is because this is the one that can closely match the settings on the Red Cat. So it's 250 millimeters f4.9 and the front aperture is 77 millimeters while on the Red Cat it's only 51. Thus the name Red Cat 51, which is also comparable optically to the Space Cat, the White Cat, etc, etc, etc. Okay, so let's jump into the photos that I got. So the first photo is a single sub of 300 seconds that has been stretched with the Nikon on the left and the Red Cat on the right. And for the purpose of this video, all the photos on the left will be Nikon and all the photos on the right will be Red Cat. So looking at the Nikon image a bit further, we will see here that the image does get a little bit of jellyfish nebula in there. Similarly, when we look at the Red Cat 51, we can also see that some of the jellyfish nebula is starting to poke out of the background noise. The next pair of images is a nine panel optical abrasion comparison, where we're looking at the center of the image compared to the four corners and four edges for both the Red Cat and the Nikon. And here you can definitely start to see the difference between the two lenses, as the Nikon has a lot more artifact coma in its edges than the Red Cat, which stays relatively flat throughout the frame. You will also notice that the stars in the Red Cat are a lot sharper than they are in the Nikon. And this was due to the fact that the Red Cat is a lot easier to focus than the Nikon was, and it would maintain focus over the evening, whereas the Nikon did shift a bit. One thing to note with the Nikon is that there's no way to actually lock the focus and that the throw, which is how much of the lens has to rotate 
to go from one extreme to the other isn't that much. And during the night, it was kind of obvious that the focus had changed. Now, one could argue that if I kept a more diligent eye on the focus, the Nikon may have performed better than the Red Cat. However, the issue I had is that this is under a typical use. Um, you can sort of tape the focus down, but the other issue too is you're dealing with temperature changes and the Nikon has a lot of lens elements in it that can shift and move as the camera points in different directions over your night's evening. Whereas the Red Cat has a focus lock on it to hold focus and the throw is definitely a little bit more difficult to move and it doesn't, it requires quite a significant more turning one extreme to the other. You can see this in the change over the night of the Nikon. And to be fair, we'll show the Red Cat as well. However, the Red Cat, by an order of magnitude in terms of the change, is about 25 times less. So it is a big difference, and it does have a big effect on the final outcome. When we look at the full width and half maximum values for the stars, which indicates how pinpoint the stars are, we can see here that the Red Cat is significantly better than the Nikon. And this is where larger numbers are worse. We can see that the Red Cat is significantly better than the Nikon across the field. And from a standpoint of being a flat field, we can see that the change in the Nikon camera is significantly more than in the Red Cat, which maintains a relatively flat field and the number change is not significant. The other thing you have to consider with the Nikon is unlike the Red Cat, which has only four element optical design, there's actually 22 elements in the lens itself and another and another seven in this teleconverter for a total of 29. Now, this is great for making the lens fast and it's great for making allowing for zoom, but again, this is one of these situations where it's not ideal for pinpoint accuracy and flat field. And I just wanna say, that's in no way saying that this is a bad lens. This is an amazing lens for ultra fast autofocus, vibration reduction in it, um, it is f2.8, whereas the Red Cat is only f4.9 as its fastest limit. This is an amazing lens. The adapter is great, but just simply from a pure point source um, ability, this lens isn't designed to handle that. And that's okay because only really in astrophotography can I see somebody really needing that nitty gritty down to the point detail where you're sitting going like, I have a light source that's one pixel wide or two pixel wide or three pixels wide that I need the lens to stay in focus for and it, to properly produce it with no coma or other optical abrasions all the way from the center out to the edge of the field. So in no way am I bashing this lens. It is amazing. It's literally the best lens I own from a telephoto standpoint and it is definitely one of my main go-to lenses. It's just for astrophotography, there's a reason why I upgraded from this, you know, three and a half thousand dollar lens to a seven hundred dollar telescope it's because that telescope does one thing and it does it very very well and you see this in the final stacked images of the jellyfish nebula when using the nikon versus the red cat as it becomes very obvious that the nikon produced a very nice image but the red cat just blew it out of the park so one could argue that I matched up a prime lens with a zoom lens and the zoom lens was ultimately doomed to fail. And to a certain extent, I agree with that. However, most people, when they're starting out, when you say, what kind of telephoto lens do you have? It is going to be a zoom lens and therefore they're gonna compare that zoom lens to something like this as a telescope or even a longer telescope as telescopes are never zoom. And this is something to keep in mind. So if you happen to be somebody who does bird photography or wildlife photography, and you have one of those expensive lenses that go to like 600, 800, 1000 millimeters uh, focal length, then yes, you might wanna argue why would I then go and spend money on a telescope. However, this telescope is about 700, $800 US, whereas if you look at what a telephoto lens is um, in this range from like most suppliers, that's going to be more expensive, easily over a thousand dollars. So the question becomes, why didn't I test with a 200 millimeter prime lens? Apples to apples instead of sort of this apples to oranges comparison. Um, and the reason is simply I don't have a 250 millimeter prime lens. In fact, I only know of a few of those. 
One of them is a Fujifilm 250mm f4, which is about $3,300. And the other lens I could find that's 250mm is made by White Point Optics, and that's $20,000 and up. Definitely outside my budget for doing this. And again, part of the reason I'm looking at this is because a lot of people who are looking at their first telescope, um, but not wanting to spend a tremendous amount of money in a giant mount, might be looking at the Red Cat um, or maybe a 60, 70, 80 millimeter scope, and they're wondering, is it really a step up from what they're getting already? Of course, after watching this, if you're still not convinced to get a telescope, and you might be thinking, well, is there a prime lens I should be considering? Right now, the highest ranked one that I know of is the San Young or Rokinon 135 millimeter f2.8. That lens has got really high quality. It is wider than the Red Cat, but it does produce very good, and it is actually a lens rather than a telescope. The normal use you'd expect out of a lens, however, it is manual focus. So keep that in mind. So if you enjoyed this video and this more technical comparison, please give the video a like and comment below what kind of video you wanna see in the future. Because I'm making these for people that have asked me questions or comments I've seen over and over again. So my goal here is to produce content that you wanna see and I'm very interested in hearing what kind of comparisons you might wanna look at in future videos.